want to see how hot it is outside. This pan is filled with water. Hello, SpongeBob. Ten minutes later, the water is gone. Wait, where is SpongeBob? No, no SpongeBob. No, not please. again. No. How ibuprofen nowhere pain? How ibuprofen nowhere pain? Ibuprofen have secret. Ibuprofen not nowhere pain. Ibuprofen everywhere, whole body. Ibuprofen inhibit cox. No pain. Only notice where pain. Science. <laughs> I used to be a lot of A while ago, I bought this little tube from Russia, and I think it's finally time to crack it open. Inside of it, besides all the sand, is some nice cesium metal. This is very similar to potassium or sodium, but it's even more reactive. It's kept in this glass ampule to protect it from air, and having it break open could be really dangerous. What's interesting though is what happens if I hold it for about 20 seconds. Just the heat from my hand was enough to melt it, and I now have some slightly golden liquid metal. The melting point of cesium is only about 28.5 C, or 83 Fahrenheit. This makes it extremely close, but not quite a liquid at room temperature. If I hold it for another minute or so, I can completely liquefy it. I just have to be really careful though, because dropping it in its liquid form would be an absolute disaster. I keep a lot of toys in my science classroom because depending on the unit you're teaching, some of them are remarkably good at helping out, like a slinky for teaching waves. But none of these can compete with the awesomeness of the Euler's disc. If you're teaching angular momentum or kinetic or potential energy or friction loss, Check this guy out. Stay with it till the end, you'll hear the jet engine taking off. I want to thank my friends over at Flynn Scientific for sending this my way. It is incredible. The students are amazed by it. Science!
Skull Identification Speed Run. Ready, set, go. Species name is covered up. Flip it over. It says it's from Africa. A large animal from Africa. Probably a mammal or a reptile. To distinguish between the two, let's check out that lower jaw. Notice how it's all made out of one bone. That's a trait of a mammal. We have a large mammal. To narrow it down, any interesting features? Definitely. See this huge canine tooth and some sharp premolars? This guy eats meat. Probably in the order carnivora to distinguish it even more. Let's look at that dental formula. Okay, we have three incisors, one canine, three premolars, one molar, three Three one three one is the dental formula for Felidae, large cats. This is a large African cat. There are three kinds. We have leopards, cheetahs, lions. Okay, see, check this out. This pinched area is called a sagittal crest. Cheetahs don't have that. Cheetahs have nice smooth skulls, not a cheetah. Leopard, lion to distinguish between the two. Check this out. This this hook right here is called a paraoccipital process. Um, it sticks out a lot in this skull. That means this is a lion, Latin name Panthera leo. Let's go! I wonder how many dead one planet civilizations there are out there in the cosmos. Maybe they're among us, I don't know. Yes, it's funny, that the universe appears to be 13.8 billion years old. Earth, like four and a half billion years old. In another half billion years or so, the sun will expand and probably evaporate the oceans and make life impossible on Earth. Which means that if it had taken consciousness 10% longer to evolve, it would never have evolved at all. But I think this is, this is one of the great questions in physics and philosophy, uh, is uh, where are the aliens? Maybe they're among us, I don't know. Do you think we'll make contact with aliens within the, the next 15 years? Well, that's a really tough one to say. This is just some regular ice, but it's filled with bubbles, and I think it's really ugly. What I want is some beautiful ice that's perfectly clear, and I think I'm going to try making some. To get started, all I need is a regular cooler, and I'll fill it with some warm tap water. I'll bring it up to roughly an inch from the top, and then I can put this entire thing in the freezer. Using a cooler to do this forces the ice to form from the top down. This allows it to freeze without trapping air, and I have to leave it in there for about 36 hours. At this point, it should be good to go, and I can take it out. I'll then flip it upside down, and I'll leave it in the sink for a while. I then pulled away the cooler, and I had a bunch of ice. A lot of it hadn't frozen though, and I carefully got rid of it. At the bottom was a really nice and thick chunk of ice. It's a bit too big though, and I'll have to chop it up. To do this, I apparently just had to make a shallow cut all the way around. Then, when I tap it with a knife and a hammer, it's supposed to make a clean break. However, I think I hit it a bit too hard. This was kind of sad, but I was a lot better with the other cuts, and I was able to chop it into four large chunks. I then ran one of them underwater to clean it up, and this was what I was left with. It's somehow even better than I thought it would be, and it kind of blows my mind how clear it is. There are some spots with some small bubbles, but it's still really impressive, and I think that it almost looks fake. 